Hey there, this is Jake Green, and I wanted to quickly show you some reasons why I love, 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 love the Living Crystal device and how I incorporate it into my daily practice and some practical ways that you can use it starting out as a beginner in energy healing, Reiki, mindfulness meditation, you name it. So we're gonna get to a quick overview video of how it works, some cool ways you can implement it, some different crystals, shapes of crystals, and so forth. So without further ado, we're gonna hop straight into it and have some fun. So here we have the living crystal device. So it's pretty, pretty neat. This is a, a prototype unit. So mine's could be a little different than yours. Um, mine's also travel size. So they'll be, they may be travel size additions in the future because I'm often on the road. So, so we can first see here that we have this crystal base. We have this coil. Um, and you press a button for it to turn on and off. And notice how immediately once it turns off, you can feel the field of the energy retreating back into itself, right? The field still remains, but it retreats back into itself. But as soon as you turn it on, you can start to tune into that field effect that it's creating. Now, this field effect is further amplified when you put on a object of, for energy. So here we have some a uh, rose quartz right here. I don't know if you can see that. Ideally, you'd use something spherical for it to create a more spherical effect. So tuning into that rose quartz energy and feeling how it's emanating, how it's changing the space around it. Now that we've done that, we've integrated that quartz energy. Let's try something else. Let's say you are a um, person who is following Franz Barden's work or you're into hermetics, you may be familiar with this image. If you can see that there. Right, that's the cover of the Franz Barden's first book. So let's say if we place this image into the field of the card, right? We can either put it next to the living crystal device or even under it if we want. Now, try tuning into this field effect. Imagine yourself practicing the first step of the Franz Barton framework, doing the concentration exercise, right? And feel how the living crystal could amplify your practice dramatically. If you already have pursued most of the Franz Barton work, you already passed that, you've moved on to invocation, evocation, Kabbalah, then don't worry, don't fret. The living crystal also has you covered because all you need to do for, for this to, to kind of help with the invocation process is to intend whichever being you'd like to invoke um, through. We're not gonna do that in this video. We'll save that for my complete evocation and invocation course. But for this video, I'll do something special and show you these Kabbalah cards right, which all have been charged Kabbalistically and represent different Kabbalist colors. So for this video, we're going to put in one of the mother letters. We're going to put in the letter M. So M has a feeling of chill. It's a blue-green color. And we're going to feel its effect through gravity, the magnetic fluid mastery, and an understanding of the micro and macrocosm of the fluid principle. So I'm going to place this letter M charged card into the living crystal field. And I would simply like you to notice the effects as you tune into this device. If you were here in person, I assure you, you'd feel it immediately. Your ability to feel it through camera depends on your belief of mental transference. But to use a living crystal device, you don't need mental transference. You could be extremely uh, energetically insensitive and dull, and still you would feel the device very powerfully, very strongly. 
as far as a spectrum of having energy sensitivity, you could be the least sensitive to energy and still feel something and gain something out of the living crystal device, so long as you're intentionally working with it. So for Kabbalistic use, you can absolutely use this. And not only that, you can also use other letters as well. So you can use four letter formulas. So for example, let's just, here, let me pull one up here. Um, let's try Yahweh. Have a look at this card, Yahweh. So let's place this under the living crystal device or even just beside it. You'll notice that the letter M still is carrying that vibration, but let's stack that under here just for fun. Yahweh. And now maintain your concentration and tune into the energy of the living crystal device. And notice that this card of initiation of medics is still within the general field of the living crystal and is still affecting the energy. Now, if I were to pull out this card from the energetic field, you may still feel some of the RISDIS jewels, but you also may feel that this energy is not quite filtering the same way as if when that card is being integrated. Now, let's try taking out the selenite from each side and notice the effect of how this energy feels. You may notice some residual effect of it, residing, leaving. And now let's take out the Yahweh card. And now we're left with the letter N. Depending on your mental transference ability, each of these may have very interesting and distinguished effects. Now, you can also use this device not only for hermetic purposes, but if you're involved in Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, it doesn't matter what belief system. You can also use little idols that you have, like this one. Oops, let's see if you can focus on that. Here is a little Buddha for Sunday. And you can also place that in the field. And notice that effect. You also notice that Kabbalistically, you'll feel this energy of this Buddha interacting with the Kabbalistic letter M. So these different energies you place in the field can and will influence each other. Let's try adding the selenite back to the sphere on each side. Notice if you start to begin to feel any energetic difference. Now we'll pull the Buddha back. We'll take out the letter M. And then we're going to pull out one of the more important tarot cards for the initiation and termetics framework. So I'm quickly going to look for the magician card and then place it inside. But for now, I just found the foolish man. So let's set that next to this. Tune into that energy. And as we have the foolish man here, here is a Chinese bowl. Let's place that on top. Hmm. 
notice if you feel any connection or any energy coming through to you. Next, we will also introduce the Magician card as seen here. The Foolish Man, the Foolish Man, Magician, and Franz Barton's card here. Instead of a bull, let's place this red coral, which represents Mars energy. So now we're feeling both these energies being pulled through and feeling the energy of Mars being pulled through the initiation framework. Notice how that will feel very different than rose quartz, as this energy is much coarser and much more intense. Next, we'll place an emerald. And this emerald is in a pyramid shape. The shape of the object you place will have an impact on how the energy spreads. allowing that emerald to activate. Notice how it's changing the energy signatures that you could pull and play from when doing any of your initiation work exercises. Last but not least, I'm going to pull up the different mother letters of the Kabbalah, and we'll place them in the field of this card. Or better yet, I'll just introduce the letter H, which is the, one of the initiatory energies to Kabbalah and understanding it. And then also the key to the true Kabbalah card. And then let's place the letter R, this gold color, for understanding. Here's another interesting effect that we can add in addition. Here is the Sun Sphere Tarot card. Let's add this behind. Notice any effects or changes when we introduce the energy of the Sun Sphere. Last but not least, we have this object back here, which is a little, little Sakyant Buddhist spell sheet from, uh, that I bought from a monk. So look, what we're going to do is we're going to place this sheet um, 
right over where these cards are. And now notice how the field changes and integrates all this information. The more items you may add, the less distinguishable the energies may feel. What I'm showing you is a case study of how you can use this to stack different energies with each other and how they communicate and interact. But what I'm trying to show you is the field effect. All the different initiatory exercises that you do on the physical, astral, mental, akashic level and in each respective area of your practice all influence each other just like this. The same goes with your immediate environment, your friends and family, and so forth. Having even a small living pra crystal practice where you're placing little objects here and there can give you a ton of insight and soul mirror work into the reflection of your own life. You, you can, of course, use this for working on your soul mirror work highly efficiently, especially by putting your journal, your copy of the initiation text or any other sacred books within the field of the living crystal as you do whatever meditation practice you wish. So without further ado, I just wanted to give you a quick summary of some ways and applications that you can use the living crystal to 11x your spiritual growth and spiritual practice. So if you have any man mental transference ability and you kind of fall along that wave of all those introductory energies, then I think you'll have some sense of how this could amplify your spiritual practice massively. You may not even need someone to initiate you because the living crystal can act as your initiatory guide. So you might not need my invocation course or invocation course or anything else for me. If you're sensitive enough, you could just work with the living crystal, place a book under it, and then through your clairsentience, or you could tune into all the energetic signatures that you need from the book that you're working with. That could be Franz Barnes' book, that could be the Bible, that could be the holy text of your choice. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is that this is a device that pulls energy through, through the highest, and will enhance whatever practice you're doing beautifully. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you gained something from it and I'll have more content to share about the Living Crystal 